Well, hello to all of you, and thanks for joining me for this edition of the Church Security Answer Man. We're going to try to work on getting some of your church answers, your church security answers that you send in to us. And today, though, I want to uh, add to what we've been talking about. We've been spending some time on communication issues, dealing with difficult people and questions to ask suspicious people at church. And so I want to add one more thing that really I didn't have time to put into some of the other discussions, and I want to add that in today. So let's get to that. I want to talk about a little aspect of dealing with difficult people, and it's really what their expectations are when they come to your church and when they deal with people in authority, which is you, security, your representatives of the church, your ministry leaders, uh, those kind of things. And so uh, we want to deal with a dynamic that they show up with when they are uh, nervous and stressed, and some of them are under pressure, they're having problems, and they're coming to see you, coming to see your uh, church. As we talk about this, I want to first talk about, just as we lead up to that, uh, you, because you and I are part of the conversation. We're part of the uh, stresses and those kind of things. And we talked about that authority. And the first thing I want to mention as we look at, at you, do you like your authority and that position that you have with the with the church, with church security or as a greeter, or you're leading a, a security ministry or whatever that looks like or ushers. And that can cause us issues in this authority dynamic that I want to talk about today. Do you have biases against the people that you deal with? That's important for us to discuss. You know, and those biases are not the big ones that we think of. Sometimes those can be little ones that creep up on us. And maybe it's people showing up for handouts all the time and and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, are do we begin to develop a bias against those folks? Because your body language will show a majority, you know, the studies that I follow say 55% of our communication is nonverbal. I want to talk about that a little bit because if you have a bias, and I'm not, I'm not here to really change your mind or judge you, that's not that kind of thing. But I want us to be really good representatives of the church and balanced at the same time that we're doing our security duties or whatever those functions are. If you're in the lobby as a greeter or a usher, whatever that is, I want us to be on top of these kind of things. If we have a bias against somebody, we need to compensate for it. And I'm talking about the, the little things. Certainly, I'm not, again, here to try to change the big things with you. You know, compensate for it. We got to be smiling a little bit. We got to be compensating for uh, making and making sure we're welcoming and we have a good attitude if we have if we feel like oh no here comes here comes another person wanting a handout another homeless person needing a handout and so we've got to make sure we're compensating for that attitude if we have that and then you know are you having a bad day when we're having communication with people we've talked about this a little bit before you have a dispute with your significant other in the morning you know, before you head to church and all of a sudden it's affecting your communication. So we need to make sure if we're having that bad day that we're compensating for that and make sure that we're being aware of uh, what that can cause us as far as issues. And, you know, are you critical and judgmental? And sometimes I've seen it. It happens to the best of people. Uh, especially depending on your previous career or your current career, your paid career away from the church. You know, what do you do there? Sometimes we can get over the years, get very critical and judgmental of people. And the same thing at the church. Again, going back to those people that maybe we have a little bit of biases against people asking for help, or maybe where our perspective is people whining and crying all the time. I just want to make sure and mention that that can affect our communication when people are coming into the church, when people are uh, tasking us uh, as security people, those kind of things. And again, that body language can scream that we have an attitude because so much of it is affected and so much of it is oozing out of our body if we have feelings, that 55% of our communication, nonverbal. And there's some studies that say it could be more than that. Uh, so let's talk about this dynamic of authority. And this is where I'm going. We're going to be short and sweet today. The dynamic of authority says that uh, we are, you know, at odds with people as far as when they come in, we are 
we're not the same level. They're coming in at a lower level on the defense, we're going to call it, but they're at a lower level than you are because they're coming in, they're new, they're not used to your facility. Maybe they're asking for help. Maybe they're looking to get some help, maybe even some spiritual help, all those kind of things. And they haven't been here before, or they're having a bad day and they're coming in and, and those kind of things. And you're up here at this level where you're the authority figure. You're the person who is they're looking to for help. So very important as we look at this, uh, the dynamic of authority, we look at that difference, that difference, that's that gap, that difference in the level. And you're in the offensive position or the offense position immediately. And so, and they're immediately in the defensive position as they show up. Your goal, my goal is to narrow that gap and try to get us on the same level, if you will. And so we want to try to get us to where we're like this. So good communication skills, uh, thinking about how we communicate, listening well, active listening. We've been talking about some of those things in different ways lately. Good communication with people. You know, here we go with uh, trying to be on our toes to minimize this uh, difference here, this difference, this gap. How can we do that? Active listening, having a great attitude, you know, welcoming, friendly, you know, maybe even where, uh, you know, identified as helpful people. We go by guest services at our church. We're here to help. All those kind of things to try to minimize that, thus being on the offensive, us being in the authority, uh, and them coming to us for help and feeling defensive and feeling uh, under the gun, if you will, and stressed and pressured. So how can we do that? And really, it has to do with immediately having a great attitude, being friendly, the more we can do of that. So if you're not that person, and I have trouble with that sometimes, I'll be honest with you, being friendly, and I can just naturally be in a bigger person and I just naturally sometimes can can look like I'm not happy and it's not the friendliest person. So I'm encouraging those kind of things for you to try to be friendly, get that hand out there, shaking hands and uh, being nice to people. If there's a security issue with shaking hands, you don't feel comfortable, then lay on the smiles and the friendly attitude, offer to get coffee offer to give them a tour. We talk about those things all the time. That's a great way to minimize and level that up, if you will, and, and, and get you on the same page in this process and make them feel more comfortable. And the next thing that where that comes then is we need those active listening skills. And we've talked about those. There's training for that stuff. If you go to churchsecurityanswerman.com and we just need to be extra friendly. Here's the issue, is if these people show up feeling defensive, feeling um, like they're under, under the gun, that they're, they're you know, very sensitive to stuff, if they show up feeling that way and we're not super friendly, if we're not trying to reduce that gap, then these folks are going to go away uh, and they're going to feel like they didn't get anything from us. They're not going to feel a change. They're not going to feel like they got any help, any caring, any concern. And that's the point I'm trying to make. Again, this security goes right along with our ministry and ministering to people. When they show up having a bad day, having a bad life, uh, feeling nervous about going to the church, feeling uncomfortable, if we don't do some of those things to be friendly, uh, to show them tours, be courteous to them, uh, something that makes it extra memorable, then there's a good chance they're going to still leave feeling nervous and concerned and not feeling comfortable coming back. So if they're just going in the door and you're staring at them as they go by because you're evaluating them and they go in, sit down, go through the message. I mean, you know, things can still happen in that message, but it's also coming through those front doors and dealing with us. And so and the friendliness and that kind of thing. So if they don't get extra friendly, they may not want to come back through that door again. And, and we want to make sure that we're paying attention to that. Thanks for joining me. Hey, here, this was quick today. Here's a great video that I think you will also enjoy on a relative topic here. So join me in this one as well. And let's keep talking about this church security topic.